All right, so I wanted to touch base briefly upon the topic of independence. Because independence is really our ultimate goal when we're working with our individuals. Um, and although we've talked a little bit about the importance of independence, uh, specifically when we're teaching tasks um, and how we use least to most prompting in order to really try to encourage independent responding. Um, I feel like in general we need to remember that um, you know to uphold our clients and dignity when we're working with them and really create some socially significant change we need to remember that at the end of the day we're working so that they can be functional in life and being independent is obviously such an important part of that functionality so independence is really the end goal as well with every IEP goal in mind um, every intervention or skill program that we want to create independent adults and we need to start on this right away um, there are some things you need to do to help students be more independent um, some of them we've already gone over for example the bathroom right during bathroom time prompt the students to be as independent as possible let them do some of the steps on their own such as getting the soap or flushing the toilet your goal is to get out of um, get out of helping them with their bathroom routine and to the point where they can do it all on their own um, obviously that's what we do task analyses for but if you don't have a task analysis in place and it's not a goal and objective having those visuals in line for them really help with those routines right so remember you got to wash your hands and that way you can be hands off and you can maybe just point to the steps to give them that extra reminder of everything and then they can do it themselves um, dressing is another great example so um, the morning and end of the day can be hectic time for kids even if they're proficient at dressing right we know especially with our ADHD friends that this can particularly be a difficult time especially if they're on meds and um, it hasn't either kicked in yet or it's definitely fading off um, it can be tempting to help the just put their coats on themselves put them on them and just rush them out the door literally just do everything for them but that's not creating independence um, so teaching those little steps such as doing the buttons or zipping up the jacket um, independently and then putting it all together again in that task training procedure is going to be really beneficial but then also having that visual schedule set up for them can help create some more independence and can help them navigate through that routine a little bit faster because it's predictable it's going to be the same way every day there's a concrete visual that you might be able to use that shows all of the steps in either their dressing routine or the morning routine expectation as a whole or maybe the evening routine okay and plus you can't argue with a visual it's here it's concrete it's not going anywhere it's the same thing every single day so you can just keep referring to it and say nope sorry you know we can't have a snack until we go to the bathroom we brush our teeth take a shower and get into our PJs okay um, and the same can be said with eating eating is another time where it's incredibly important to foster a sense of independence right and especially because oftentimes it's a community time or a social time where individuals are with each other so it would be really nice if they had some independence. Um, we all want the student to be able to eat independently with no help. That's our end goal. But um, we might not even get there 110%. But we can definitely work towards it one step at a time. Um, especially working with occupational therapists and physical therapists can be beneficial for eating. Because a lot of it has to do with that fine and gross motor. So you might want to consider using some... Um, adaptive silverware or plates or cups and that can even even help foster independence with eating routines um, another way that you can foster independence and this is in the classroom environment or at home is jobs having a job is a great way to teach life skills um, make your life easier and include each student as a member of the community classroom or the community at home in a residence um, the point is for them to do the jobs themselves 
right? It's very encouraging. It creates some self-esteem and self-worth, like it can accomplish stuff. Um, and using that least to most prompting really helps them do as much as they can by themselves, okay? Um, another important thing to work on, and sometimes this comes with a little bit older children, is really isolating and teaching those life skills. Um, things that are going to be fundamental for them to be a little bit more independent in the future. So some of the programs that you might be implementing might be literally teaching them how to do laundry or sorting laundry or sorting dishware, putting the dishes away or sweeping the floor or taking out the garbage. Um, some of them might be more job skills based training, right? Um, I know back in the day I had a kiddo who we would teach to sort videos and he would put the videos on a shelf according to category, right? Uh, of course we don't have videos anymore so a more functional skill might be something like stocking shelves, um, helping to clean up, maybe greeting people, um, doing basic cashier work, that sort of thing. Um, so along that same line the community is obviously a place where we can work a lot and to help create some independence because again they're not going to be in a structured environment for the rest of their lives hopefully right in a classroom at home sitting in the living room or their bedroom at the kitchen table um, we really need to be able to generalize all of these skills to the typical environment because realistically that's what's going to be most socially significant for them um, so we always need to keep that train of thought about how, what I'm doing now, how is that going to impact them for the future? Am I teaching them those goals and skills that are at the bottom of the pyramid that they need in order to reach goals in the future that are going to be useful and helping them feel like they're a, a member of society and that they're useful and that they have some self-esteem? Um, remember when we were talking about creating our basic ABA goals and programming, you know, we always want to think about the functionality of it. Um, you know, who cares if they say pleasantries, pleases, and thank yous if they can't even ask for juice or something to eat, right? So we, we always need to think about what's our primary focus here for this kiddo um, and what's going to be the most meaningful for them. Um, so I think that this is a great end to our independence. Um, there are a lot of wonderful programs out there for those that age out of um, the 18 uh, cap and go into um, DDS related services. Uh, and so if you'd like more information on those, please check out uh, DDS, the Department of Disabilities. Uh, they've got a plethora of information um, for resources, job opportunities, residential support services, uh, school-based services, everything you can possibly think of in ways that we can help support our older individuals with disabilities.